When Stieg Larsen began writing this, what became a trilogy and what could eventually become more than a trilogy, what were you thinking? What was he hoping for? As I would, the writing of Millennium started off as as uh, just for fun and actually out of boredom. Uh, it started off when on our summer vacation in August two two thousand two, when Stig had nothing to do, and he was complaining. And I said, "You must be something you can do, don't you have?" That text, for instance, that short text you had about an old gentleman who receives flowers. What's that about? And he said, I don't know. Who is he? I have no idea. He said, who's sending the flowers? No idea. Well, find out. And Think that's about it. And that's how it actually started. As, and it went on like that as, as a hobby project too. Out of curiosity and to know and to build up an, an alternate world. And some, some, some place within this process, there was also suddenly room to uh, voice that disappointment with the development of Sweden. There was suddenly a place to say all the things that you wanted to say, uh, which there was no room for in his other journalistic, uh, with a focus on the extreme right. In, in, in Millennium you could talk about other things, corruption, scandals, uh, abuse of uh, political power or abuse of uh, authority, Abuse of women, of you, women indeed. In women indeed, which was a subject that always was close to his heart, but he he could never really expand on it, given that this extreme right focus took so much time. But he always said that um, um, the dis discrimination and violence against women and racism were were two sides of the same coin. So he never really saw any. He saw the same mechanisms and the same. Um, Ac actions taken against these groups by people who, well, were opposed to them. The two of you were together for such a long period of time, and many have wondered why you never married, and there was a good reason. What was that reason? This this was the reason, the, the, the choice to uh, focus on the extreme right. Uh, that became uh, a dangerous situation, not continuously, every hour, every day, but it went up and down, but it never, uh, it never subsided completely. It's like you have a journalist who focuses on, on writing about the mafia or writing about motorcycle gang. You can do that once, but try doing it for 20 years and more, like Stig did. Then you, then you are in trouble. Then you are, people are searching for you, not just in Sweden, but in other countries as well. Given that he, he was publishing his his reports in in an international magazine in written in English, um, so that became a problem. And given that the Swedish public records are extremely public, uh, anyone can find any information. Uh, if 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 we would have married, Stig would have been listed as married in the, in the public records, and that means that you could find out his his wife. That would be me, and where was the wife residing? As it was now, they could only find out that he was not married and he had a home address. But try going to that home address, and there was no Stig Larsson living there. So for a long time, the extreme right wing thought that Stig was gay. They matched him with all kinds of men on their internet sites, uh, so the strategy worked. At least he could have his home secured and have a security for me, and I could feel safe as well. Whereas the workplace was of course not safe, he received threats there at the news agency, um, at least at one one time uh, people were waiting for him outside to beat him up and he was warned by someone that don't go out there standing there and he looked out the window and sure enough <laughs> so he got bullets in the mail 
the regular mail in, in at uh, the news agency at different occasions. We got postcards from mer- Swedish mercenaries in, in who were who were uh, taking part in the civil war in Yugoslavia. We had uh, threats by phone. We recorded them. We never answered the phone. We always had an answering machine. So that was the life from the end of the 1980s and so on. So I tried to keep him safe, and he tried to keep me safe, and it it worked out because of this. <laughs>